So like I mentioned before, makeup application on a deceased is different from doing a makeup application on a living person. I have to touch up someone's makeup this morning and I thought I would do a little demonstration. I can't do it on the decedent because that is against the rules, but I can show you my glove. I hope that'll do it for you. Now, typically when you apply foundation on a living person, you use a foundation brush, you use sponges, but in the funeral home, we use stipple brushes. And if you can see, it's a very coarse brush. And I'll show you why. Now, when applying makeup on a decedent, you cannot use wiping motions. For example, wiping motions. It, it doesn't lay on the skin correctly. So what we have to do is take the stipple brush and you have to and it helps kind of give a natural appearance to the skin as if there were pores or filling in the pores and I'll show you hold on so the bottom area is where I did the sponge and then the top area is where I did the stipple brush and if you can see that it disperses the makeup differently and this gives a better application on decedent skin. Now, when I have to do a decedent that is newly embalmed, maybe a day or two after, their skin is still soft, so I will use the sponge method or a foundation brush. But for a decedent that's three, it's been post, about three days post embalming, I'll use uh, the stipple brush. The same technique applies when you're doing lipstick, eyeshadow, you cannot wipe it. Some you can, but most of the time I use tapping motions to disperse the makeup on the skin. And it depends too with eyeshadows. There's a lot of demarcations that may be left from um, the embalming process or how their skin set while they were post embalming. Um, so you just have to be mindful, but I thought I'd share a little tip with you today.